viewing the sun early in the morning, two to 10 minutes with no sunglasses, um, overcast and um, horizon gauging. How is this going to help with brain optimization? Yeah, so it's very clear. All right, so without doing a total deep dive in circadian biology, every mm -hmm. cell in our um, in our body has a 24 hour clock that's regulated by genetic mechanisms and cellular mechanisms, every cell, right? There's no escaping this. And it's not a coincidence that the earth spins once about every 24 hours. Okay. So there's a strong evolutionary drive for us to obey circadian principles and biology in our behavior, in our sleep patterns, in our food intake, et cetera. So the main way in which our body and nerve cells and liver cells and gut cells know what time of day it is, is by the rising and setting of the sun. And it's not consciously perceived. It's not like you say, oh, there's the sun. I see the sun there it's setting. There's actually in a subconscious way, there's a specific set of neurons in the eye called melanopsin ganglion cells. These were cells that were discovered by a guy at Brown University named David Burson. These cells perceive the particular, they, they are activated by the particular wavelengths of light created by low solar angle when the sun is low in the sky and when it's setting again, low in the sky. So rising and setting the low solar angle when it's directly overhead, high solar angle. So what's interesting about this is that these cells when activated, send a nerve pulse to a set of neurons that sit right above the roof of your mouth called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Those cells secrete a bunch of things into your body and organize the timing of all the cellular processes, all the cellular processes in your body. Now, it's not like your liver cells need to be active at the same time as your heart cells. Your heart has to be active 20, around, 24 hours around the clock. Mm -hmm. Your gut has to do its thing at a particular time. So think of your body kind of like a factory and every portion of that factory needs to do different things at different times a day. When you view the morning sun, it doesn't have to be right as the sun crosses the horizon. It can be, you know, I would say view sunlight within an hour of waking up, ideally within the first 15 to 30 minutes, but within the first hour of waking up. Ideally does, before the does this work through a window or does it have to be? It works through a window. Okay. It is best if you can get outside. It's okay. best if you take some glasses off. You do not need direct light coming into your eyes. It can okay. be reflected off things. So if you're on a snow field in winter, you need, without sunglasses, probably only take 30 seconds to trigger activation of these cells. A densely overcast day in the depth of winter in Scandinavia, you might actually have to get an artificial light that mimics sunlight in order okay. to stimulate these high levels of activation. Um, a couple of things happen when you get morning light. And, and of course, never look at any light that's so painful it's hard to look at. You can, <laughs> right. And we haven't solved the retinal regeneration thing yet. So, yeah, that's not uh, a good don't idea. Do that. But on cloudy days, there are a lot of photons, a lot of light energy coming through. Okay, it's, There's still a ton of light coming through compared to artificial light. Early in the day, you need a lot of bright light to trigger this mechanism. The irony is that in the middle of the night, you need very little light to trigger a separate mechanism that we'll talk about that's actually very bad. So when you view morning light in this way, from and if you wake up before the sun, turn on artificial lights, but when you view morning light in this way, it triggers activation of the cortisol pulse, which is a healthy pulse of a hormone that puts your system into a general state of focus and activation for the day. It also sets off a timer of about 16 hours that runs down. And after that 16 hours, the melatonin pulse starts coming up. So that melatonin is going to put you asleep. The cortisol is going to help you move through your day. It's also going to protect you against infection and things like that. Not every infection, but it's going to enhance the immune system. A lot of people know this, but stress hormones in the short term actually in, enhance and invigorate the, nerve, the immune system. This makes sense. If you've ever been working, working, working really hard, and then you stop and rest, you get sick when you rest, not when you're in full states of getting after it, so yeah. to speak. Because in times of famine or times of lack of food, you need to be able to move and find things and support your children and do all these things. You couldn't afford to get sick. So right. the nervous system recruits the immune system. So if there were one practice that I could recommend to everybody, it would be get light in your eyes early in the day. Ideally, you get a little bit of light in your eyes in the evening as the sun is setting because the more cues that you can give your brain and body about time of day, where you are in that 24-hour spin of the earth, the better. But the, the, the one that's really important is that morning light viewing. Most days, if you miss a day, fine, but don't just dive into your screen first thing in the morning. Hmm. And people say, well, wait, but the screen and the, and the lights in my house are really bright. Ah, but early in the day, you need really bright light 
and there's nothing like photons from sunlight. In the nighttime, between the hours of 11 p.m. and 4 a.m., it's a different story. The retina and these cells becomes very sensitive to light. And if you view light of any color that's too bright, not just blue light, or can people kind of demonize blue light, mm -hmm. but it, bright light of any color, what ends up happening is there's a pro-depressive circuit that's triggered. There's a brain area called the habenula, H-A-B-E-N-U-L-A, that sends a signal to the dopamine system that suppresses levels of dopamine and now has been shown in three studies to lead to depressive symptoms, lower mood, and de defects in learning and memory in the days that follow. Now, if you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night or you flip on the lights once in the middle of the night, not a big deal. But if you're up in the middle of the night looking at screens or watching Netflix or looking at your phone, you are severely dampening levels of these neuro horm neurotransmitters and neuromodulators and hormones that make you feel good in the subsequent days. And it's a slow effect, but it's a real effect. So very, put simply, view light early in the day and throughout the day if you can. In the evening would be great too. And then avoid bright light in the evening and, in, and at night. And really from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. If you need lights, turn them down dim. Place them low in your physical environment. Overhead lights trigger these cells more than lights lower in the environment. Yeah. And some people really take this to the extreme and they turn their house into a cave or they put on red lights. I don't think you need that. Yeah. But if you're having sleep issues, this is probably the most important set of things that you can do to realign those cortisol and, and melatonin rhythms. And there are great papers. There was one published in Cell Reports. It's a great journal showing, oh, excuse me, Current Biology, also a great journal, but uh, same publishing house, Cell Press, but different journal, showing that students at University of Colorado who were really disrupted sleep rhythms, if they took them for a weekend and they got them away from devices and they just viewed the sunrise and sunset, yeah. it restored their cortisol and melatonin rhythms in the entire week that followed by just wow. two days of exposure. So this is a real thing. And look, dopamine, feelings of well-being, mood, affect, offsetting depression, or if in the case of viewing light at night, triggering depression. And this is this is serious stuff. And you look at our, our, the way we function nowadays, waking up, dim rooms, straight into our screens, avoiding, you know, you know, not avoiding electronics in the middle of the night. And we are, we are biasing ourselves for low mood affect and depression. And there again, I say, you know, like some people may genuinely need prescription antidepressants, but I think most people need to look at whether or not they're engaging in these very basal activities. Again, zero cost, Sun goes up, sun goes down everywhere on planet Earth that I'm aware of. In Scandinavia, in the depths of winter, it might be a shorter period of time where it's up and down, but it's there. So, you know, that's, that's what I've got to say about that.